On Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion is taken from the prophet Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears, and I have not been rebellious. I have not drawn back. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who is he that will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus executed. 
Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? Pilate asked. And they all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. And Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting. He took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your responsibility. And all the people answered, that his blood be on us and our children. And then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. And after they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And there they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothing by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it to three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. And in the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From the sixth hour to the ninth hour, Darkness came over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. And immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine and vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. I said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. And when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that happened, they were terrified, and they exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Here ended the gospel. Throughout the land. 
Then, cover, then the cover of lead was raised, and there in the basket sat a woman. He said, This is wickedness. And he pushed her back into the basket, and pushed the lead cover down over its mouth. Then I looked up, and there before me were two women, with the wind in their wings. And they had wings like those of a stork, and they lifted up the basket between heaven and earth. Where are they taking the basket? I asked the angel who was speaking to me. He replied, to the country of Babylonia, to build a house for it. When it is ready, the basket will be set there in its place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Who will take the garbage out? Have you ever asked that question to someone at home or expected someone to do it? Maybe you debated this question fiercely with siblings. Who will take the garbage out? I will, that's for sure. Or maybe your wife gave a subtle hint. Who will take the garbage out? It isn't a fun choice, but it must be done. Someone must take the trash out. You see, garbage has this nasty habit of accumulating. A little bit of trash can become one trash bag, which then becomes two and then four. Every single day, you will add more and more scraps of food, empty cans, packaging, uh, dirty diapers, more and more. And more. You see, garbage accumulates. <clears throat> also, garbage can stink. And if you can smell it, you could imagine the uh, rather awful smells. The smell it can creep through the house and it lingers. And it gets worse and worse over time, enough to make you gag. All this is bad enough, but garbage also has a chance to become deadly. You see, sometimes garbage is accompanied by mold and germs. Sometimes there are toxic chemicals and fumes, and often garbage attracts vermin of all shapes and sizes. And if you're not careful, your garbage will eventually become a health hazard. And as we see in this seventh vision of Zechariah, the prophet sees a basket. Think of it as a waste basket. What kind of garbage is found in this wastebasket? Well, we see when the prophet takes a peek, he sees a woman. Yes, a woman. In the Hebrew, the basket is called an ephah, a basket that holds between three and six gallons. It isn't a very big basket. And we see that this woman is called wickedness. And the Hebrew word, for wickedness sounds a lot like Asherah, the name of the Canaanite fertility goddess. So this woman might be a small figurine or an idol of Asherah. So what's inside of this wastebasket? It's the worst garbage of all. Idolatry and all the wickedness that results from idolatry. This garbage can is full of unbelief and sin. And you know what? Sin looks and often acts a lot like garbage. Sin accumulates. How many sins have you committed today? Or last week? Or in your lifetime? And how many... And, and oh... And sin can make our life stink. You don't like it when people sin against you, and you enjoy sinning until you suffer the consequences, right? And sin is deadly. Ultimately, sin will kill you. Thankfully, the Lord slams shut the lid. He closes this garbage can, and then two women with stork wings carry this waste to Babylon. He sends this trash to the pagans in Babylon. Let them sit in their own form. However, God dwells in Jerusalem, and if God dwells there, all sin must be removed. The garbage must be taken out. And this is precisely what our Lord does. 
He takes out the garbage, he takes away our rotten idolatry, and rancid wickedness. John the baptizer rightly says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus was loaded up with your sin and, and with my sin. He carried these sins out of Jerusalem and died in a garbage pit. That's why, that's right. Jesus was crucified in a place called Golgotha, and Golgotha was this landfill. It was this place where the people would dump their trash. And that's where Jesus goes. He carries our sins to a dump, and there sin kills him. Sin kills Jesus instead of killing you. And after Jesus takes his last breath, a Roman centurion thrusts a spear into his side, the blade sliding between his ribs, piercing his lung, and possibly his heart. And this took place to fulfill what Zechariah 12 reads, They will look on me, whom they have pierced. They also fulfilled the words of Zechariah 13, which read, On that day a fountain will be opened, a fountain that washes away sin and impurity. When the centurion put his spear, a fountain was opened. Water mingled with blood poured out from the wound. And when Jesus died, he took away the filth of idolatry and the stench of, the stench of sin. And so he makes us clean. Now, I'd like to ask, have you been accumulating guilt lately? <clears throat> have you been repeating the same sin over and over? Is your life a mess because of your idolatry? Have you worshipped Aphrodite, the goddess of sex, or Dionysus, the god of wine and parties, only to find that they make a mess of your relationships and your health? Do you feel like your shame might bury you, suffocate you, and kill you. Well, this week is a great time to confess our sins to God. John tells us if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and he will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> if you bring your garbage to the Lord, he will take it away. And in some ways, this Palm Sunday is, is great and fantastic. Just like when we read the triumphal entry before we entered the church. But did you, do you remember our gospel reading? What's happening in that? Not much. In there we read that our Lord dies. And yet he died to take away the sin of the world. He took out the trash for us. And so this week and Good Friday... It is good to be rid of our sin, and it is good to be clean. <clears throat> Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat>